bodies are mostly space. That is the weirdest thing to me. I'm reading articles uh, in physics journals and, and the scientific magazine, uh, online magazine. I think it's called Scientific or Science Alert or something. I'll put the description in the details. Or you can just, just do a, any type of uh, internet search on how much space is in the body. And it's 99.9999% space. And that is just so strange to me because like, what are the implications of that? I know it means that our perceived reality is um, skewed. And we already know that. We know that because we can't see radio waves. We can't uh, perceive all the different um, things in the ether. Like I can't see your voice when you talk to me. Uh, but I think I hear it. It's a strange concept for me to contemplate that if, if we're, according to the physicist, you could take out all the space out of the human body and it would fit into something smaller than a grain of sand. That is mind boggling. Like it, it's hard to wrap your head around. And that's not a, um, that's not a theory. That, that's a fact. Like if they really have gotten that down to to understand the space, and that means we're basically an, an illusion, and that baffles it, it makes me confused about what is our understanding of life, and kind of changes the definition or changes the way I think about how I look at everything. Now, see, for me, I know you're told that as a kid in opening science class that, you know, the Big Bang, everything was in a super condensed whatever, the size of a sugar cube, maybe, of everything we know in the known universe. But then you said something really interesting, like you can't see me talking to you. You can't see music, but it does affect us. Now, let's think about something. If we're mostly empty space and we're held together with something, Maybe we're held together with these wires, these cords, if you will. So when someone's speaking to you, it's not necessarily the words that people say 90% of the time. It's how they say the words. It's how music influences us. It's how humans can interact with each other. Like maybe knowing that something's wrong or you have that intuition. Maybe all that just comes into play because there's so much empty space. We're so much nothing. We're all so much nothing. Everything's so much nothing. So when there's those sound vibrations, whether it's speaking words, whether it's music, whether it's just any sound, like right now, if you were completely silent, you feel the emptiness of not having sound. But why is that? Why does the sound affect you so much? Is it because there's so much empty space in everything that the sound is actually going through you? And it becomes a part of you. It's actually inside you. It's bouncing in and out of those strings of which we have. Whether it's in our brain, and our bodies, and our heart, our own magnetic fields. And we're still putting off some kind of energy. Just like a sun, even though it's mostly empty space, it still has energy that's resonating out. Just like the human body, we have our own magnetic field that repels and attracts. But if everything was solid and condensed, would we still have that ability? is not the empty space and everything make our reality what it is. And it doesn't change reality for us because that's always been a part of our reality. We're for just really understanding that it's not the solids that make us up. It's the gaps and it's the emptiness. Like if you look at an old piece of furniture, you see the wood and it's got the knots in it. Well, does that make it more beautiful or does that make it less beautiful? That's the imperfection. Maybe the imperfection is the void. And that's what we really thrive on is the void and not the things that are here. Maybe we spend so much time in life looking for the things that aren't there because 99% of everything is empty. Well, maybe the void is the perfection and the, uh, the, the fraction of the, what we, what I call you and me and this desk and this chair I'm sitting in and uh, maybe that's the imperfection. Maybe the void is the you know, the emptiness is the perfection. And, and it's and you're right when you said energy because 
Well, when I think about space, you think about, well, why can't I just walk through that wall? You know, why can't, I, why am I not falling through this chair if I'm all empty space? And it's because we're full of energy. We have a uh, magnetic repulsion against other uh, objects, even though they are almost all emptiness too. And I like what you just said because I wasn't thinking about that in the when you say the uh, the cords or the strings that are, uh, hold us together. It reminds me of what we know of water. And uh, if water can make these beautiful geometric shapes under a microscope whenever it has pleasant sounds introduced to it or pleasant uh, voices or chants or prayers, uh, you know, it's been scientifically proven no matter what religion, if they have this chant or prayer and they, a scientist will put it under a microscope and it changes into a geometric a form that is really aesthetically pleasing. And if you're really ugly and you have uh, really nasty sounding, irritating music or sounds or somebody's angry, that changes the you know, molecular structure of, of the water too. And because we are water, so we're water and space, the sound is critical to us. So it's so easy to understand why if somebody talks to you in a bad tone or somebody, uh, you can feel somebody's energy when they walk into a room and they seem aloof or they seem angry, or they seem happy. Somebody's energy when they come in really affects the collective of whoever happens to be in the room. Now, when you think about it like that, and then you have all the empty space, which is between you and the other person that's in the room, but there's all that empty space in between every one of our cells. If you go down to the smallest level, you see the nucleus here, and then you'd have the protons and neutrons and electrons in distances that would be thousands of miles apart when we're here. So not only do we have this empty space, but the things that make up the space are very, very long distances apart. So there has to be that sound or that something in there that keeps us all woven together or else it would all just dissipate. So then you come into a whole nother philosophical discussion of what keeps our space at a certain point where we have these solid-ish areas where we think this is solid, and then there's these non-solid areas. So it goes down deeper is when you start thinking about it, well, you're mostly empty space. Uh, well, you're mostly empty space, but then what keeps the empty space solid enough so that it doesn't melt? Yeah, that, that just brings me to, uh, oh, not Rupert Sheldrake. What's the other one that uh, talks about you know, it's irrelevant. Not irrelevant, but it doesn't matter. I can't remember his name. I'll remember and put it in the uh, description. Where he talks about uh, kind of the same thing, that this reality is a, a false... Uh, it, it is a real version, because we're experiencing it. We're loving, feeling. We get sad, happy, angry. We're having this conversation. So this is real. But there's also many other levels of reality right in front of us that we're not uh, instantly privy to because we have our five senses for survival. These are, this is, this body that's made up of mostly space and then it's, the, what is material is mostly water. We still have to respect the dangers of of this world, even though we are mostly space and water. You know, I don't want to go out running through the woods uh, when I know a wild pack of hogs are, you know, right there want to come chase me down. Or if I don't want to go over to the hunting lease and just go walking around in full camo when uh, the hunters are out there looking for deer. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go walk in traffic because that bus will still kill me. So, so it's a it's such a strange um, 
mental exercise to explore what it truly means. Like, what, what does that mean? I, I, I'm having a difficult time wrapping my mind around the, uh, the implications of knowing that. Uh, just knowing that my wife, who I love, is mostly space and water. That, that's, that's just, <laughs> it's something that boggles the understanding. But then at the same time, when you understand how powerful the sound of the voice is and how powerful, uh, whenever you have these emotions inside of you, when you have uh, expressions of love and gratitude and respect and honor, and you're, you, know, you were laughing or joking or just having any conversation, that comes through in my voice, changes the molecular structure of her water, which in turn gives a feedback loop, which makes my water happier under a microscope. And it's this wonderful cycle. And it could easily be, and we all have seen this with other people's relationships, that you get in a fight or you get in something and then you just spiral in the other direction. Everybody is angry. Even the thought of them or the, the sight of them just pisses you off and it, it changes your chemistry and your it literally changes the molecular structure of your water. That's so weird. And what's weird is, uh, well, I don't know if it's weird. It's, um, it's just interesting to, to contemplate. But the void, the distance between everything, it, it almost like uh, Harriman says, it's uh, the void is where all the information is passed. The information in cells and how they uh, communicate, the, how you are listening to me, how I communicate with my wife. That energy is transmitted through these little plonk, this, this, the smallest measurable size, the plank, plonk, however you say it. That is a, uh, that's fascinating that that is what information travels through. And so I guess. Well, information can't travel through things that are more solid. For example, lead. Lead's on the heavier end of the spectrum. And what do you want to do when you want to blot out waves? You put lead up or copper mesh. You yeah, have copper mesh. To block it. So it stands to reason that you have to have the information in the empty space because when you condense more and more solid, that's when the information flow stops. Well, I think we can now, in this age we live in, we can understand... I think it's easier for the human mind to wrap itself around the uh, the notion of information going through the air because everybody carries a phone now. Everybody watches videos on the phone. That phone's not tied to some wire somewhere. I mean, you're getting it through the air and you just can't see it. And even right now, we have uh, radio waves, there's Wi-Fi, there's uh, all phone towers. Yeah, really yeah. all the information in the universe is... It is right it's, it's, yeah, just right here. I mean, I'm just, we're scooping it up. As we, there it is. Uh, it's a, that's an amazing thought, and I think we we take for granted uh, now that people know that, but they don't think about it. And that was more of an Eastern type philosophy before these inventions took place that you could transfer energy and thoughts wirelessly. I think uh, this morning was a great example. Jill was uh, just in a contemplative state, and I didn't know that. We were about to work out. Couldn't see her. I just felt that she was just, you know, her mind was off somewhere. And I knew that. How did I know that? I don't know. Her back was to me. And, you know, I don't know. Those things happen all the time. It's, it's, it's kind of like you too. Like, like I know whenever you're in a good mood or not a good mood or indifferent every time you walk in before you ever say a word. What's really interesting is where is that information stored? Right. <laughs> where Where is it stored? And how close is that information? Because <laughs> if that is the case, which we know it is, so when you can tell when somebody has good or bad influencers or vibes coming into a room, then that means that there's some kind of field surrounding every human 
that is keeping that in balance. Much like our bodies are held together, there's some other force that we can't see or know or understand right now that is being contained within our own body. And once the close gets close enough, you have a receiver, you have the antenna for the sounds and the waves that I'm putting out without me saying anything or doing anything. Again, that's more information being passed through the void. I don't necessarily have to say anything or have to do anything. That void's there. And at some point, those connections cross and you can see and feel and understand those things. And as you get to know someone, much like us, because we talk to each other almost every day, we see each other at least once a week, we can tell when there's things going on in each other's lives at a much greater distance. So how do those fields come into play? Because again, we're talking about if all of the information is passed between voids because we are a void. What's really interesting to me is not that we are a void, is that where do those voids overlap and overcross and connect and make that web, which is our humanity, then you go even deeper between what's just the person and what actually makes us human. Because what makes us human is not our body. What makes us human is our consciousness, is our ability to take in information, to give out information consciously, unconsciously. That is what's really interesting to me, is that that void is still contained. But it's not as contained as we think it is. Much like each person walking around is a little mini solar system. We have this little field around us where our feelings and emotions and everything is going around us. And people can tell when you walk into a room, say, hey, are you feeling bad today? Or you look a little down, or you look a little tired without saying anything, without it even being on your face. But we've all talked to somebody and we've said something and their whole face just went blank, like their system just shut down like they're going through a reboot phase. <laughs> that is the interesting thing to me, is how the negative space is all around us and interconnects and weaves to actually feel the real fabric of not what is just human, but what is life in this experience that we're going through. And then if you get enough humans together with enough woven energy, can impact more things on a bigger and bigger scale. Oh man, yeah, like a mass uh, mass prayers is a really good yeah, example. And, and not only mass prayers, but just the group or mass psychology. You know, there's been countless studies on how large groups all the all of a sudden become one mind, and, yeah, and that is a, that is a fantastic observation. Or, or like uh, what Napoleon Hill says about, you know, you get a couple of guys together and you meet regularly and you have a mastermind group on whatever it is that you uh, are, are trying to accomplish. And that's true. When you get a couple of people together and you're talking about a specific subject or you have a specific goal in mind, all of a sudden the creativity begins to flow. Uh, I, I feed the creativity to you. You feed it to me. It goes to Jill. It goes to... Uh, or guest, or, or whoever is around us, it, it is a fascinating thing how all of that is transferred. And I like how you said, where is it stored? That's something I haven't thought about before. Where is that stored? And where and how would I know? Like the times that I've called you randomly out of the blue, knowing you were stressed out about something. Just something told me, I think Trey's stressed. Let me just call him and see what's up. Or the time he said, hey, are you thinking about India? And I'm like, yeah, I'm reading a lectures course on what yeah, what about India? Yeah, it's so weird how that thing happens. Yeah, weird. Yeah, it must be. Y'all would think that is so strange. I used to think it was strange, but now I just understand somehow uh, the people that you're connected with, you can, you can feel them. And especially if you're open to it and, and, and kind of practice it. I don't know really how you practice it. It just kind of comes to me. Like, Trey just said one day, I just felt that my brother was thinking about India. Like something just said, hey, he's thinking of India. And I don't know where this thought came from. <laughs> so I just called him to ask him because I thought it was funny. I'm like, why did this thought come into my head? I call him. You thinking about India right now? Yeah, sure I am. <laughs> that, that's, a, uh, that's an odd thing. But now I, uh, I've come to realize that that is... Uh, that's a part of who we are. That, that is a part of the 
experience. And because we are empty and we sin and everything relies on these, these waves, uh, or the mental waves, our mental, uh, we, we've been brainwashed to believe that our capabilities are much less than what they are. I think it goes right to uh, remote viewing and, and all of the tens of thousands of uh, declassified documents from government studies, from MK Ultra, from stuff the CIA was doing, uh, just countless psychics that have uh, been on payrolls of governments around the world that they rely on. Now, granted, there's a bunch of quacks, and of course there are charlatans and snake oil salesmen, that's just a given. But there's a lot to that. And I, I go back right to our experiments that we've personally done with remote viewing. It's the strangest thing ever. And, and, but where does that information get stored? Where? Like, is it just here? Is it just right here? Does that mean uh, when my body just disappears, the energy is uh, somewhere else? Where does it go? Well, energy, by what we're told, can neither be created nor destroyed. Right. Only changed. So, if all the thoughts are circling around, it's kind of like that thing is uh, nothing's ever new. Everything... It's some variation of something. Yeah, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, it's a little building block of something on top of something. Where this step went to here. Or as soon as you think about something, oh, everybody's already done it. Yeah, that's what makes me very inclined to believe in reincarnation because of this this energy is... it goes somewhere. It moves somewhere. And we don't know or fully understand it. And I would probably be much less inclined to uh, believe in reincarnation if it weren't for Ian Stevenson and his vast amount of scientific research before the uh, internet was in full swing. That he, there's unexplainable cases that just make zero sense unless there's reincarnation. So that, and if y'all don't know who Ian Stevenson is and his fantastic resource, I think he was in the University of West Virginia. Uh, just look him up. It's pretty fascinating. Ian Stevenson. And his, um, his studies are phenomenal. And it's hard to, it's impossible to disprove. You know, how do you disprove a young kid, um, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, whatever he was, wanted saying he needed to go a couple, telling his parents he needed to go a couple hundred miles so he could chastise his sons. And, uh, and they're like, you're, you're crazy. And then you know, after enough pushing, you know, this little kid is insistent that he has these boys named, you know, whatever they're named. And the parents finally just had enough listening to the kid and they just drove to that village and the son told them exactly where to go, walked right up to his boys and started chastising them. Start telling them. <laughs> <laughs> and knew all the details of their life and how he raised them and everything else. I mean, how do you explain that? Where's the information stored? Yeah, where's the information stored? That, that is a, I mean, there, there's there's a lot of instances of, of similar type things that have happened. And that's harder to explain pre-internet. You, know, you, you could have some charlatans, I, I could think, probably... Uh, Probably still be difficult, but it wouldn't be terribly difficult to, you know, train your kid or you know try to pull off some kind of scam to get some PR for some whatever reason. But pre-internet, that, that's a tough one. That, that's that's tough. <laughs> and where is it stored? Like, where is the love for like me and you stored in this vastness of space, or me and my wife? Like, like where? You know, I. I I practice on a regular basis looking inside of myself and think. Well, wait a minute. If you're ninety nine percent faith space, you've got a lot of exploring to do. Right. Like if you really <laughs> think about it on that level of self exploration, and you're ninety nine point nine 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 percent space, that means you can go an entire <laughs> life and never really know yourself. Especially if you think about the distances between everything. Yeah. It's a lot of really self-learning. Maybe it's uh, why meditation is so 
powerful. And whenever you think about, uh, <coughs> when we had uh, Gil here for six months, Gil, y'all, many of y'all know him from uh, previous videos. And he really helped me focus on uh, going more deep inside, going into the core of who you are and, and thinking about how we are all space and water really changes that intellectual dynamic for me. Because now I know I can close my eyes and I can use my mind's eye and my imagination and, and I can get into a, some breathing exercises or get into a meditation and go into my core. And now my core is emptiness. And maybe that's the point. <laughs> maybe that's the point. I don't know. It's just fascinating. We certainly would like to know what y'all think because I find this uh, type of conversation one that people should have more often. That is why the mystics of Texas, that's why we explore all these topics because it is so, to me at least, I think it's vital to understand the human condition by having conversations about topics nobody ever really talks about. And we have so many of them. Uh, and this is one of them. This is one of the a big one. Because whenever you look at your kids or anything else, you're just like, wow, this is tough. You're, you're nothing but space and water. Well, it does give something interesting to contemplate. And that is really what we're here for. I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation today. You can see us on all the alternatives and have a good day.